Okay guys, um, welcome back to this video that's actually just a bit of a sort of uh, a slot in video. Um, the last film I did, or the one before the last film I did, was about um, the enhanced autopilot functions that um, Tesla has emailed me and given me for two weeks, which expires tomorrow. Um, and I did a video on that and you'll see a card up there for this, for that video. Um, However, I did make a bit of a schoolboy error in that video and a number of you felt obliged to point that out to me, so thank you for that. Um, and that was to do with the summon function that you get as part of the enhanced autopilot. And the summon function allows the car to come forward and backwards uh, via the app. Now, the mistake that I made was that when I was trying to bring the car forward, I actually stood in front of the car. Now, whilst in the settings, um, the front clearance is set to 12 inches, um, obviously that's for a solid object, not a human being. And if there's a human being in front of it, it just won't do the summon. So, I am uh, going to correct that, and I'm going to show you what the summon's like when you're not as silly as I am and try and stand in front of it and beckon the car to you, as I did in the previous video. So we're going to open up the app, and you can see the button summon there. And now you can see that it's highlighted forward or reverse and by touching forward, but this time standing at the side of the vehicle, um, you will find that it's preparing and it summons the car and off it goes. It's actually straightened the steering then as well. So you can just take it out. It's, it's adjusting steering just to make sure it's going straight. Uh, I'll just take it to the edge there. We'll even go up and down the kerb. There we are. So we'll stop it there. And then we'll just wait for it to re-engage. Someone's stopping and then we can reverse it just like this. And I've just realised how dirty my car is. Now it's funny enough, when it gets to the kerb here, a little bit of a, it just sort of struggles a little bit but then realises, no, I can go for that and pushes on. Or it did the other time I tried it, didn't do it that time, so let's just wait for that to re-engage and do it again. Go on. There she goes. <laughs> and got a bit scared because it started to accelerate a bit more, so I'll just wait for that to... So obviously kerbs are a little bit uh, more challenging for it, but it should be fine now and it'll come straight back and actually automatically now it'll stop before the hedge because I've got it set um, to uh, actually stop I think it was 20 inches from there so there we are and that is how someone works or should have worked so apologies about the first time I'm also going to go and try and do smart summon again because that was completely unsuccessful last time and I think that that is not down to the car. Well, I know in fact now it's not down to the car. It is in fact down to uh, EU and UK regulations that don't allow it. But I think I may have discovered a little bit of a workaround. So we're going to have a little play with this. And then, and then finally for this video, I'm going to show you a quick demonstration of the Navigate on Autopilot because Again, last on the last video, it was very much you were experiencing it with me and so I was a bit sort of dodgy about doing it properly. So I'll show you how it should be done uh, towards the end of this video. Okay, so I've come to a, a little car park again, similar one to the one we were at last time, except the other side around the building, uh, to try and see if we can actually get smart summon to work now at the moment it won't work properly because the eu and uk regulations you have to be within so many feet of the car i think it is and it's only allowed to travel so far so it's not working in the uk like it does in america uh, or the rest of the world i think it's only the eu and the uk that have these restrictions but i'm trying something that might just i read might be a little bit of a workaround but what I've done is I've paired up a second phone to my car and that is in the car. So that's the one that's going to say to the car that there is a phone key uh, within the six feet range. And I'm actually going to do the summon on this phone and we're going to see if that works. Uh, this is my first attempt at doing it. So um, you're doing it with me. 
uh, and we're going to hit summon and we're going to hit smart summon now you can see it's drawn the map there as to where it wants us to go and I think anywhere by here is a pretty good place keep it within that circle I'm assuming it is what you've got to do and then we're going to say go to target press and hold which I'm doing now it's lost the map for some reason let's just close that down and try once more summon connect into the vehicle so it's connected to the vehicle smart summon maybe the target is the target is within and it's not a massive target area fair play but the target is within maybe I need to be within press and hold to go to target someone failed please take over parking immediately yeah interesting there was an error go to target waiting for phone to come back in range that's a shame so maybe that workaround doesn't actually work around <laughs> um, the only one thing I'm going to try now is I'm going to come out of there go back in and there usually is a button that says come to me but come to me there we are let's try that Please monitor vehicle surroundings. Waiting for phone to come back in range. Big failure, I'm ever so sorry. <laughs> um, so a sort of um, a mixed update really. Firstly, um, a, a good success with Summon. Gotta say that that clearly does work now. Uh, straight forwards and backwards. Uh, works really well, just avoid standing towards the front of the vehicle smart summon even though i tried did a sort of little workaround sheet that didn't work um and so really not usable in the uk at the moment that could change if regulations change but right now smart summon not not really a benefit um the next little video i'm going to show you now this next little clip is just how to use navigate on autopilot um, for the enhanced autopilot function within the car. Um, the reason why I wanted just to quickly update with this, I mean, there was a lot of footage in my video where I fully reviewed this system, uh, but of course, you know, you were experiencing my first experience with it. Now I'm a bit more used to it. I just thought it'd be worth doing a quick video to show you exactly how it works. So we're just about to join uh, a road where you are allowed to use Navigate on autopilot. It's not a motorway, it's an A road. Um, and I'll run through exactly and give you some examples of how you use it to overtake what you actually need to do within the car to achieve auto lane change. So let's go. Actually, it'd be interesting to see um, what this, how it approaches this bit of road. So I can put it on autopilot now because there is, as you can see, you might be able to see on the map there, there is a real big circle around here, which you can't really do much more than 30. I mean, this is a 70. Uh, luckily, we've got a van in front of us, so that's going to keep us down to about, well, 50 at the look of it, which is about the right speed, really, to take this road. I'm hoping he's going to go our way, because um, that'll force the car not to go up to... 70 miles and it'd just be interesting to see if it makes the maneuver around this loop i've always turned it off i'm hoping this guy isn't going to pull off now and go on the uh, other direction yes he is okay interesting car is slowing down because it can sense he's pulling off i just need to accelerate there just to let it through uh, navigate on autopilot has now taken over now this is a 30 mile hour bend Oh, fair play, the car is slowing down. I can't complain about that. And it's taking this bend really well. Uh, this is a sharp, this is a sharp bend. Centre road markings are worn out as well. 
so but they're still being displayed on there ah, high curve detected never seen that before auto steer limited but it's still doing it high curve detected high curve detected is it going to let me come on to the motorway there is nothing behind is it going to bring us on yes it's asking me to indicate and here we go okay so that worked really well gotta say It wanted me to go into the fast lane then, I'm not quite sure why. 600 feet navigate on 400 feet navigate ending. So why would navigate be ending? Right, so navigate on autopilot has just ended. <laughs> um, so we're just on normal navigation now. I think it's going to pick up again because it certainly brought us onto this road, which is um, the A449. Here we go. So it's picked it up again. So there's a there's like a few meters there where um, it doesn't actually register it as a navigator autopilot route for some reason. So let's run through what you've got on the screen and how this differs to normal autopilot. Um, normal autopilot, you don't get any of these road markings. You just get two blue lines that indicate you're on autopilot. But when you're on navigate on autopilot with the enhanced autopilot, then you get this blue line in front of you that's showing you the path ahead. Um, you also get this blue indent um, on the sort of description part of the screen, which you can see. Um, you do still have to, you know, tell the car that you're in control every now and again, uh, just the same. Now we're coming up to a lorry, we're doing 70. The car has asked me to indicate, so I'm indicating to confirm a little nudge on the wheel. It has to be a slight nudge, and the nudge is there just to tell the car that, yeah, I'm in control. In my view, it's not necessary because if you've moved the stalk, then you must be aware and, and focusing on what you're doing. So I don't really understand why you have to do that touch of the wheel. Now it wants me to go back in, little touch of the wheel, and for some reason I had a little bit of phantom braking then. I don't know why, but I did. It may have been because of that lorry parked in the lay-by. Um, Phantom braking, I must admit, hasn't. I've not experienced phantom braking for an awful long time. Um, but it, you know, it, it just hesitated. Well, you couldn't really call it a phantom brake. It didn't aggressively put the brakes on it. It was just a little bit hesitant. Dropped the speed by a few miles per hour. Okay, we're coming up to another lorry now, so we should get an indication to over to move into the fast lane uh, once it picks up that. Uh, yeah, here we go. So you indicate, little nudge on the wheel. Check yourself, obviously that there's nothing coming but the car has done that and here we are now it's made that lane change for us so it is a very good system i would imagine it'll keep me out now because there's another car that we're going to be overtaking yeah it is a good system and it is definitely an enhancement over the standard autopilot because you have to disengage autopilot to make the lane change whereas in this system you're keeping autopilot going. So it should now ask me to go into the slow lane. Here we go. Indication, little tap on the wheel, and it does the maneuver perfectly itself. Turns the indicator off, and here we are now in the, in the normal sort of uh, slow lane of the dual carriageway. So I think hopefully that's demonstrated to you how enhanced autopilot and navigation on autopilot works. Um, it is a good upgrade. That and Summon definitely work really well. Smart Summon, not, not so good. But again, that's down to really the EU and the UK regulations. And that might change one day, who knows. Um, but hopefully that's demonstrated to you how this works. Is it still an upgrade that I would want to do? I don't think so. I don't think I could warrant the payment right now uh, to have those few extra options. Would be nice. And as I said in the previous video, it's a shame actually that they're not included in the standard autopilot, particularly the lane change part on a motorway or dual carriageway, because to me that should be part really of the standard autopilot. And, and the, of course, that could happen, couldn't it? Um, you know, as full self drive and enhanced autopilot have more functions added to them, you would hope that some of the, you know, other functions will be added to the standard autopilot. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think it's all about money, is it? Who knows? Anyway, so thanks again for watching, 
And as always, I'll catch you next time. Oh, my God.